Hey, this is Zoe Williams of the Voice of Reason and Zoe What Morning Shows here at Dash Radio. Listen, everybody on YouTube, you guys have been a tremendous support for my shows, and I appreciate everybody for tuning in every week and you know participating. But I'm serious than a mug. We need your help on the GoFundMe campaign. We really want to do the VOR Radio Network, and I'm asking you personally, each and every one of you, we're over nearly 24,000 strong here on the channel. We need you to support by donating. Just click that little button down there, and it'll take you directly to the GoFundMe campaign. It's GoFundMe.com forward slash Zoe Williams. Anything you can do is greatly appreciated. It continues our movement. It continues our forward progress. And I appreciate you all who have already donated. If you can do it again, I thank you so much. Thanks again. So what? I'm out. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this is gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. I was that right. Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I'm like to kiss a woman's ass. Is there something wrong with that? Damn. <laughs> he told me he had a vasectomy. I'm pregnant. Betrayal has been committed. Hit you with the bad hatch routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. Of reason. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the voice of reason back in the building, hot button radio. You already know how we get down. We got to have real conversations. I'm just telling you right now, get to your phone line. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. We really got to hear from people. Oh, God. In particular, brothers and sisters. This is that tough conversation that the nation needs to have. What's wrong with us? How come we don't really like each other? <sighs> Before I even get there. This is why I wrote this book. I'm a product of our environment, of our condition, of our conditioning. I was brought up here. I'm a brother. So I wrote a book and the book is about relationships because I believe none of this cooperation, none of this working with each other, none of nothing is going to work in our community until we fix the relationship issue. I don't think we can respect each other if we don't value each other. We need a, a, a guide. Hallelujah. For how to do it. The relationship dismount, how to stick the landing when exiting a toxic relationship. Only 210 physical copies remain. Only I have the paperbacks at my disposal. <laughs> you got to go to my website. I am ZoeWilliams.com. If you order one, I will mail it out tomorrow. If you order it today, <laughs> right now, I am ZoeWilliams.com. That's where they are. If you're one of these newfangled humans attached to your cell phone device, like Litsa, <laughs> yes. our engineer tonight, you can get it on iBooks or Kindle and all of that other menagerie. But if you're a traditionalist and you like the pages to turn and you like to, I'll just self-mark, little bookmark, you fold it here if you like that kind of stuff, I am ZoeWilliams.com. Get your copy now okay enough of the preliminaries frank pull up the gofundme page we also need the support on that gofundme situation www.gofundme.com that's my track baby don't turn it down boot thing that that shit is crispy right there right 
GoFundMe.com forward slash Zoe Williams. This is how we keep the lights on. Literally, our specialized lights and cameras, all of this stuff. Yeah. This is how all this happens. And then we pay Frank. Frank, put up the website. Tell him what to do. GoFundMe.com. Support the movement. Now that that's out of the way, I like this girl next to me. <laughs> Her vibe. <laughs> A little smarty arty. A little bit. A little bit. Got a little something with her. I will ascertain what it is. <laughs> and I will quickly make short work of it. Short work of it. Ooh, that's scary. Yes, indeed. And here comes the fucking rabble rouser. Yes. Look at this hair, though. I mean, <laughs> gangster Ron Isley just walked in the building. <laughs> <laughs> La, da, 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 da. This nigga here. <laughs> Sit on down, Jeff. Hey, I'm well. Jeff Brown has just joined the fray. When I tell you, this shit's about to be crazy. God damn, Jeff. This shit's about to be nuts. That's all I can say. You ready, Jeff? I am ready, sir. Ooh, nice. Hey, nice. do me a favor. That's Broadway. Do me a favor. Move that light so we can get some of the shine off of Jeff. Maybe you could just turn it. Just turn it that way so that the light faces that way. That's the story of my life. There he is. <laughs> Jeff's in it now. People trying to steal my shine. That's the story of my life. <laughs> Gangsta Gangster Isley in the building. Well... Here we go. Jeff just walked in, so I can go right to the topic. Would you? Oh, my God. God, this is a tough one. It doesn't have to be. A uh, shout-out to Broadway. Is this... Is this, this all is all Broadway. Oh, my God. My, it's my favorite producer. It's my dude. Hot topic. Do most black men have a problem with most black women? <laughs> if so... <laughs> <laughs> if so why a deeper look at the complex love hate relationship between the African American male and female how you gonna have this beautiful sister on here but it's top cause she's smart why don't you call none of them I ain't, yeah I know that I'm talking about some of them horrible ass broads we didn't have on the show them just waste of goddamn flesh and guts some just you know, some of them women where you say, you know what? I ain't saying that you ain't shit because you a single mama. I'm saying you a single mama because you ain't shit. Uh, hey, you ain't got go. none of them on here? Uh, here you gonna have go. her? Here we go. <laughs> I ain't no this girl. Good to see you, but you, you're not horrible in spirit. So, I know. Okay. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you. Here That's a great go. compliment in so many ways. My Jeff bad. Brown, legendary comedian, <laughs> actor, writer, producer, Just extraordinaire. <sighs> Just saying. In the building. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's about to turn all the way up. Do most black men have a problem with most black women and vice versa? Do most black women have a problem with most black men? Mm. If so, why? A deeper look at the complex love-hate relationship between us niggas. I mean, between black men and women. <laughs> yeah. It's about to go down. True or false? Let me put my glasses on. That's why I bought these motherfuckers. Jesus. Damn. True or false? Black men say that when it comes to pressure, the progressive relationship pressure, a.k.a. what are we doing because I don't have time to waste. Oh, shit. <laughs> Brothers feel that other women of other races have a more let's just go with the flow vibe than do black women. Black women be on that. Nigga, what's happening? Yes, it's mm -hmm. true. Why it's is true. it that? Why is it like that? Why are you in a rush to get married? Why are you in a rush? I feel like What's going shit on? Shit or get off the pot. You know that's how black women feel at least. Like why? Yeah. If you're not uh, courting Re, if you're not courting me, my clock is ticking. There's, you know, I'm only other, valuable other, up to a wait, certain point. Let me. Uh, other get what women's I need clock are ticking. Let, let me ask the questions. <laughs> valuable how? It would just let me ask the questions. Yeah, Jesus. dig deeper. We'll She's, get there. We'll get there. She goes. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. She's, here she is being a black woman. I see. He wanted yeah. it. He asked How do you for get it. a black woman to jump out of a plane? Have a black man tell her not to. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? 323 230. 
4610. True or false? Mm. Black women don't seem as fun and outgoing to black men as other women do. <laughs> okay. It's it's going crazy. That's your girl you work at the drive thru. You know, you think the argument over, you're like, oh, I can't wait to get to just work. You're working the fucking window, get away from Keisha. <sighs> Welcome to Burger King, man. Take your order. <laughs> Hold on, please. Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, my God. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Fuck that nigga! You ain't got two kids out here in the car! Wait, I'm here. sorry, what? Wait. I got two kids out here in the goddamn car! Okay, Jeff is wilding right now. He okay, is, cool. Is. This is what he does. This I'm is. sorry. Do black men and women... This is a good one. I'm going to start right here. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Do black men and women know the difference between mm. criticizing, evaluating, and judging? I mean, I'm going to say they don't. I think that's why I went into mental health. That's why I got a master's in clinical social work. Are you kind of a better communicator? To, what are you saying? Because are I feel crazy? like both sides, I own my own fault. Like, oh, okay, you know, where can I get better? Let me learn about it. But then what happened was when I got better at it, all I heard from my other parts was, don't social work me. Don't, don't psychology me. Don't click, you know, don't be clinical with me. I'm like, these are just good communication skills. Uh oh, <laughs> wait a minute. You don't want me to use my communication skills. Damn. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the reasons I went into mental health. So I could become a better communicator. Right. Cause I was like, okay, I'm weak at this. I inherited my mom's terrible skills. She's a screamer and shouter. So you think going to school can undo mama? Oh, uh, go ahead. Jeff. No, not at all. I learned that up top, <laughs> up top, but I just feel like, Especially in the black community, black women and men, even if it's just an evaluation and you're trying to help each other, we, for whatever reason, well, there's a ton of social reasons why we'll we get do to it. it. Yeah. But yeah, that we just always default and hear it as criticism. So it might just be a genuine evaluation, but we're always, always interpreting it as a criticism. Wow. Yeah. Yikes. Mm. This shit is going bad. Jeff Brown, go ahead, <laughs> man. Uh, I like something that you just said about criticism and black people. We we tend we we well, we first off work and operate generally from such a profound place of lack. Mm. That's mm. why mm. when you date me, nigga, okay, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. It's the third quarter. Where, Everything sounds fearful yeah, and, and scarce, and, 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 and right now, and, and, yeah. urgent, mm -hmm. urgent. That's the word. Everything is urgent. God damn, can we just go to the movies? Shit, just two. <laughs> For, for for get out. Can I just I don't go to movies with niggas that I don't see myself marrying. Right. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh -uh. okay. <laughs> Shit, because I need to understand, you know, what we're gonna be doing in three point seven years from now. Okay. Well, before we even go see Kong, nigga. And I that, that's hilarious. <laughs> and I understand your 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 reason for concern, but you should have had this concern two baby seats ago. <gasps> this is yeah. Yeah, you know. Two baby seats. <laughs> <laughs> Two baby seats ago. If you don't get them baby seats out this Oh, my car. God. Put the dick <laughs> down and take two steps back with your legs closed. Oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Crazy. All the criticism. Uh, yeah. Well, no, criticism. There's a such thing as constructive criticism. Yes. Okay? Yes. Just because I'm right about something that is wrong about you does not make me hating. Okay. Correct. Absolutely. Ooh. Ooh. Right? That's fire. Yeah. Yeah. I, you could be fucked up. And I could right. be just the person to show you that. And when yes. we break up, guess what? If you don't unfuck what you did, I'm going to show up again in different flesh. In different flesh. In, a, in another dude. Right. 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 So talk to us about that. About not fixing what's fucked up or you get the same thing. Or you over heard what... <laughs> You're right. <laughs> right? Jeff oh, he Brown. said a lot. That's Ooh. why I was like, Listen. which one do you want me to attack? But look what happens. Not to, attack, but address. No, but look, talk to us about kitchen sinking and talk to us about tit for tat. Especially uh, when someone on the outside of you evaluates. Right. I, he's evaluating, but you're receiving it as judgment. Right. And then that puts you into tit for tat, which mm -hmm. justifies not listening. 
Tell us what tit for tat is, please. The clinical. <laughs> the clinical. All that shit really you've just, done. The, the clinical is just maladaptive, you know? Like, that's a maladaptive coping mechanism. It's just to be defensive. That's like the clinical term, but those aren't fun. I don't use them if I don't have to. <laughs> wow. So, really, tit for tat is you can't handle, like, the short version is you can't handle the truth. So, that's where, you know, in the black community, like, you said constructive criticism. Someone might tell you what's wrong with you, and you're not in a place to receive it because you don't want to change. That's the problem. Black women, especially, I'll, I'll own it. A lot of black women don't want to own their own baggage. They don't want to well, own oh, something's oh, wrong oh, with oh. them. Hey, hey, where's the beehive when you need them to attack <laughs> one of your own little insects? Right. <laughs> right. Like, and, and you know, we alluded that. In, we while well, we talked about it in other conversations, like I have baggage. I address what the baggage is. I try to present it up top. Um, but a lot of black women aren't ready to do that. They want you to take the two seeds and all the other garbage and just pretend like that doesn't exist wow. and still be the perfect man on their list of, you know, requirements. And it, it, it isn't fair. So it, that's where the tit for tat comes from. Because then you're like, well, I get I don't meet all the requirements on your Maybe list. Maybe if you would have finished school, thing? nigga. Right. Well, like, so that's where the tit for tat <laughs> comes from. Instead of being constructive, like, yo, I get it. I got two kids. But you also have your degree yet. Where, where's the common ground? We can still talk, though, right? Like, we can work it out. No one's trying to do that. They're, they are just doing the tit for tat. And that's where I was like, ooh, at some point, you gotta, you have to acknowledge to accept criticism, to be able to accept the criticism, to take an evaluation. You have to be in a place where you want to change. And a lot of black women aren't in a place where they don't want to change to get what they want. They want to be able to change stay. Change for what? Exactly. They want to stay exactly the way they about? are. And get the other shit. And get what they want. And I Why was I like, that don't work. Well, yeah, that don't I, work. I think all of it stems from uh, uh, these traits that you are uh, speaking of are very true in human nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is, wow, it's, I'm trying to get it out as it's coming to me. Okay. Is let, let under it ambient conditions, the Hold rest of society is closer to ambient conditions than black people in relationship. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you compare these people to these people who are under fire now uh uh these traits that you're discussing everybody got right. everybody got and everybody comes at each other um if you watch an argument of a white couple in a movie that is at its hottest you are watching the way a few of the black people and black couples i know communicate every day why because that fire that is turned up in this movie is the temperature that these people walk around at every day. Mm. And instead of going, mm. wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm I'm crazy at you and you crazy at me right. because this is crazy. Right. Instead of saying that, Hold I'm saying, the, the bitch, you crazy. No, nigga, you crazy. No, of course we're crazy, goddammit. It's Vietnam. It's fucking bombs <laughs> and shit dropping. Okay, let's let's just stop and go, we got to fight this. Right. I'm sorry right. for my ignorant shit. Can you say that you have any shit? Right. Do you? Can you? And, and without saying, the shit I have is because. Right. I don't want to hear no justification right. of the shit you have. Right. Because you got shit and I got shit. Right. And if we just work together to fix our shit, we ain't got to worry about why you got the shit man, you got. Right. My man. My man. My <laughs> man. We ain't got to. Okay. I got a Why? Every motherfucker here got a why, everything. Got a why. <laughs> right, right for everything. Okay, we can get we can we can get to why mm -hmm. later. Okay, let's get right. to work Thank now. You. It's there almost uh, it's almost. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> anybody remember Bad Boys Two? Y'all see Bad Boys Two? <laughs> when uh, uh you got the, TNN, the, you see it three times. Oh, sorry. right. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a new Shawshank. Uh, uh, you know the scene where uh, Will and Martin go into the the voodoo shop. And the yes. dude, they start breaking shit and they go, Blondie Dread. It's Blondie Dread down the street. Then they go down there to his street and the shit hits the fan. It's guns and, and bombs and shit flying. And Martin is trying to go, look, we're in Miami PD. And Will goes, okay, yeah, show him your badge. You know what? I can't hear you. They shooting at you. That's why. <laughs> well, this is where we go into relationship with <laughs> as black people. We wake up in this fucking cesspool of shit that has been set up against us mm -hmm. with the what what your friends is telling you how to deal with me and what my mm -hmm. friends is telling me how to deal with you mm -hmm. and what empire is telling us we need to deal with each other <laughs> yeah. and we dealing with all this shit 
And as soon as some shit come, the female oftentimes, and dudes do it too, but it's feminine behavior. Yes. The female pulls her badge out and goes, here's society, here dude, here's why I'm fucked up. And the dude is Will Smith. Show me your badge. Do you know I can't hear you? Because mm. life is shooting at us, bitch. Put wow. your badge back and shoot back wow. with me. And stop fighting me. We wouldn't be here if you would have got your license. <laughs> you just, right. uh, what? I'm what? Sorry. <laughs> How about this one? That's why your mama's an alcoholic. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> What does my mother's alcoholism have to do with you fucking bringing the car back with the the, the fender all dented up? So, <laughs> so, so, flow with me here. Yes. Now, that was perfect the way Jeff led that out. Oh, or, you, you know, the way he laid it out there. Yeah. True or false? Criticism, assessment, mm-hmm. evaluation may not always be agreeable, but for a healthy relationship... It's necessary. Oh, absolutely. Fucking must. Absolutely. How are you supposed to grow or become better if you aren't being evaluated or critical of each other to be better? Listen, if you can't tell your partner the truth about what you perceive them Mm -hmm. as, like, this is my truth. This is how I perceive you. Right? If you can't tell your partner that, you can't tell your partner that. Y'all niggas ain't together. Right. Y'all niggas ain't together. You just got a yes man. Hey, caller. You can't tell your partner. Uh, Donald Isley over here. What the fuck Call- is wrong with him? <laughs> caller, you're on the line. What's your name and where you calling from? Welcome to the Voice of Reason. Speak on it. Caller. Call are, are they there? Caller. Somebody said, man, for real. Well, we can't hear him. <laughs> All right, call back 323 230 4610. I mean, every, like, you guys see what happened. Tari, Tyrese spoke on sisters and, and weaves, and then all the sisters attacked him, right? Or or many people spoke out on the girl. Yeah, many people spoke out on the girl that took the picture with the baby. You know, you know Corey spoke out on it. Everybody attacked Corey. All the women, all the sisters. Oh, yeah. And, and my question is, would would Big Mama, we, we asked that, would Big Mama be fine with that picture? Oh. And it seems like women may be able to take criticism only from women that they're related to. Like, like real evaluation, like, yeah. hey. That's, I would say, uh, yeah, another woman you're close to. Like Absolutely. Like right. someone you've officially let in as someone you accept. And they damn from. sure ain't taking no criticism from no men. No. No brothers. I mean, and select even if, brothers. But what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. even if the brothers are right in their assessment is, who the fuck is you? Right. We got to undo that poison in the community. Yeah. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name and where you calling from? Speak on it. Brother from Indianapolis. What's happening, Pimp? What's your name? It's Ronan from Indianapolis. What's oh, it's up? Ronan. Speak on it, Ronan. Ronan. Hey, super five, Jeff. What's All good? right, devil dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I see uh, this clusterfuck amongst us <laughs> as uh, someone's addicted to the safety of the echo chamber um, of hearing like similar voices who are still fucked up. And with the brothers out here, we see things in a broad perspective, like with the ladies sitting there taking pictures with their little boys and everything like that. We see the negative connotations from that. But for some reason, because such and such is doing it too, I need to stick to this. It's kind of like the backwards version of the mafia. <laughs> but they're all fucked up. <laughs> God. The and and my, feeling is, my, my feeling is like nowadays guys are starting to put it in their head. If she feels that she's above reproach, She's not even worthy of an approach. Come on, bro. So the thing is, like, if I'm with you, if I fuck with you, and as men, we're supposed to take accountability not just for ourselves, but the family or the people we're fucking with, that's us. We stand at the forefront of everything. Like, hey, because you're a reflection of me and vice versa. If I look bad in these streets, same thing as you. There's a lot of ladies who've been getting a lot of backwards misinformation and programming to figure that I could do this all by myself 
Most times while you're by yourself and all fucked up. Wow. Ronan, <laughs> you earned your keep today, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the call. Report to the food section and get your portion. Your rations. <laughs> Three fifths. I'm trying portion. to honor the Dragon Moors. That's all. Indeed, man. Hey, I appreciate the you. You have mm-hmm. done well today. <laughs> Ladies, this show is for you too. Call in. Talk to her. Absolutely. That's right. Call in. I mean, we want to understand you better. Why are women why are sisters always, you know that in public disposition of leave me the fuck alone when you just saying hi? I mean, but nicer to other races? The, the oh, other races. I'm, I'm black. I'm, I'm just saying. But yes, black women do have the same face. I'm just, yes, what true. is that about? Can we, can somebody explain it to us? And why is it easier to show a black man the stank face than it is men of other races? Consequence. I'm just, Consequence. ladies, 323-230-4610. Jeff, answer the question, then we'll go to the caller. Consequence, okay? Say more. Granted, sister, you are walking around with a pressure cooker of shit. Oh my God. Everywhere you turn, somebody talking some shit about you and you can't get it right unless you got some oranges in a burlap sack over your shoulder walking down the street with a nappy head and a sundress with a giraffe on the leash. Everybody else wants to say you ain't natural enough. You ain't this. You ain't that. You did. I get it. I get it. So you got to drop that shit somewhere. So when a dude come up, this is your opportunity to, with no impunity, just just drop shit. Just drop shit right on him. And yeah, I told him, because you know you can't tell your boss that shit. You know you can't tell the people who you supposed to tell that shit. So I am I got to drop it somewhere. How about just let it go? Mm-hmm. How about let it out into the cosmos? Goodness gracious. The fuck is going on with these people? <laughs> and it ain't just, the, and I hate to just seem like I'm shitting on sisters because I'm not. I get it. I love I sisters. Get it. I get that your shit is hard, but you gonna you gonna make it harder? You right. with this? Oh, I can raise a baby by myself. Yeah, I can make a grilled cheese with an iron, but that's not the way I'm supposed to do supposed it. Supposed to, not supposed to, right? Right. right. Not supposed to. Amen. And then you got a cookout. Well, y'all thought your gas was off. Fuck it, nigga. I got six irons. I got six right. irons. I'm going to just steam the, 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 <laughs> the goddamn chicken wings. Oh, don't worry. I got this. I got it on linen. I this turned both up. Out up. Of control. <laughs> out of control. <laughs> no, that's not the way you're supposed to make. You can. Bro, you can. can. In you, the event of a nuclear holocaust, you perhaps. Might, you might get the end result you're looking for, but. Is that the way you want to do it? No. It's not preferred. No, no not preferred. Not wow. Preferred. It's scary, man. Caller. You've made it into the voice of reason. What's your name and where you're <laughs> calling you from? Me? Speak on it. What's going on? It's Jack from Honolulu. 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 Aloha. <laughs> Speak on okay, it, bro. So I'm going to drop I'm gonna drop two points real quick and then I'm going to get out of y'all here. All right, brother. Go um, ahead. First things first. A lot of, not just women, but men and women observe or receive their, I guess, identity of love from what their parents do. Mm-hmm. So Ooh. Yeah a wife or you have someone's mom just like constantly stepping on a dad's neck, you know, crushing his nuts and everything. They see that as that's okay because the man's trying to put up with it and not trying to like argue mm-hmm. in front. Nut know, crushers. And, all that. and yeah. And vice yes. versa. So nut crackers, not just a play. Ball busters. I don't know. That's, that's what, what I call are? it. No, not at all. Mm-hmm. Not at all. But, let Again, me find out. I, I just uh, like uh, loving yeah, my man too making much. his point. My yeah. man making his point. Sorry. Right, Go ahead. Go I'm ahead, so bro. sorry, Honolulu. I know Jeff ain't trying. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> it's a new day. It's all good. <laughs> Go ahead, so, bro. That being, yep. That being said, you have. You may think something con- like criticism. There's criticism. Y'all said what's the difference between criticism, judgment, and all that? Well, people like they use. This criticism. You're not, you're not using constructive criticism. Constructive criticism, you're breaking someone down, which you're building them back up. If you're just constantly breaking your partner down, whether it's man or woman, that's where you're going to have issues because in their eyes, there's nothing that they can do right by you. Mm. But they're, they're, full of, they're stuck in a space to where they're trying to fix everything that can't be fixed because you're not just bringing your issues, you're bringing your parents' relationship with you into your marriage. Wow. Ooh. I can't fix your daddy now. Right. Your daddy then broke. They've been broke. Right. 
<laughs> well, I, my, I always said, uh, or I said this to my ex. Okay, let Uh-oh. me get this straight. Nothing I do makes you happy. Then guess what? I'm free. Right. I can do what the fuck I want now because of nothing I, I would, nothing I was doing was gonna gonna make you happy. So uh, fuck it. I'm going bowling. Right. Wow. It gives you freedom when yeah. you realize you're never gonna be good enough. Right. Yes. To them. It's liberating. To them. You, yeah. Yes. You need to watch what you, how you criticize yes. people. Wow. I like his point though. Verse. Well, uh, to uh, piggyback on his point about construct constructive criticism, which is not necessarily break you down, but I feel like the difference between constructive criticism and just criticism or judgment is that it's something you can actually fix. Mm. I feel like particularly in the black community, black women spend a lot of time telling black men what's wrong with them that they can't even change. You know, these are environmental factors they don't have control over. There's there's no point in spending energy on something I can't change. You may as well give me constructive criticism, which is something I have control over that I can improve upon. So is this constructive criticism right now to all black women in America that are educated, employed, upwardly mobile, most of, if not, I'll just say most of, yes. there are no absolutes. No, followed by 3,000 nines. Uh, <laughs> most of your expectations for black men are unrealistic. I feel secure with that. Most of are unrealistic. Because most of the the goals or the expectations are realistic by themselves. It's just not the timeline that black women have put with them. Well, you know, what were so your what them. were your standards? Yeah, so at you first. had a yeah. list. Yeah, some when unrealistic. I was young, when I was young, now I say they're different you, you now. You gave us I've the matured, Monica Lewinsky answer. Oh, yeah, man. so give us this list when, of like craziness. At Eighteen, yeah, at eight, it was crazy. The okay. list was crazy, but I bet you there's there's black women listening that are all like, "Hey, man, yeah, that's a quality list." No, this is a bogus list. But that, <laughs> this is exactly what the list was. When I was 18, I wanted you to be in school pursuing your bachelor's degree or already have it. No kids, your own place, a job, your own car, okay. and a man of God. And you have Christian. All of it. And wow. Christian. Not a fake Christian, but like I go to church on my own by myself oh, and read my Bible. And a right deacon. Up, yeah. He a got deacon. A, had a, a deacon, ride up on a unicorn I mean, with a winning lottery like, ticket in his If you were in the pocket. choir or played the praise band, that was definitely a plus, right? Wow. <laughs> that Sherman. was the list. Sherman Hemsley. Deacon I mean, Fry. That is a, that is a real <laughs> ridiculous Mama. list. That is Mama. an absolutely ridiculous list. And listen, there's no dick on that list. No. And it puts you in the victim No, line. but I will say that was an unwritten list. Like, it should be a quality... If I'm going to have sex with it, a quality be hum- humpable, great sex. That, you know what? Yeah, with you put that yourself list. in yeah. the in the in the you put yourself in the victim lane with that list. Because <laughs> all I have to do is hit all these marks, and none of those marks had anything to do with my character. Right. I had a ridiculous list. I was so young. I could be a wife beater and make that list. Right. I could be a rapist, a murderer, yes. robbing liquor stores, molesting kids, and all them dudes make that list. Right. It wasn't like visit your mama like children have empathy. That list was ridiculous. Hell no. No. I don't even so, know. I mean, I just lucked out. I actually had but quality exes. Let's <laughs> let's great. let's go even deeper. I mean, you know, the God fearing is a piece. Yeah. You know, the educational element is a piece. Praise team. That's right. A piece. That's a big piece. So when you start like you know, breaking down the expectations, take UCLA. Take the UCs, right? <laughs> the UCs, all of them, David, not just UCLA. Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. The African-American population on those campuses, 3%. Half of the 3% of the African-American population on those campuses that have football and basketball <laughs> are athletes. Mm-hmm. So when I say unrealistic expectations, I'm saying know what you're asking for mm-hmm. and what is available. Know the landscape of the culture you live in. Mm-hmm. Don't just be a, a blind cog in the machine. Understand the larger machine that you help move, that you help, mm-hmm. you know. And, and and I don't think you're realist. I don't think people who add, who make lists like that. And God bless you, baby. We we we're really coming down on the 18 year old you. But when you make a list like that, okay, the du- think about that dude she just described. That dude. Okay, he's he's uh, uh, socially motivated. Yeah. He's running a social program that seems decent. Right. 
but you make him like this wow like he's a set of rolls royce keys that you're trying to find mm -hmm. you basically are trying to find this set of rolls royce keys in an arbitrary box of cereal that you think is Rolls Royce Creek keys. That's the only thing you're wrong about is the Rolls Royce keys, because it is an arbitrary box of cereal. But really, what you really did, did not describe Rolls Royce keys, you described an old class ring that you're not looking for. So basically, wow. you're you're basically going, God damn it, I want to walk into Ralph's, pull off a a box of Frosted Flakes and yeah. open it and find this old sock that I've been looking for. Wow. And I'm not going to stand for anything other than this old sock. And I'm telling you, Rolls Royce keys are going by you in the form uh, of, because you know God always, uh, or mm -hmm. the universe, I'll call it the universe to cover everybody. The universe mm -hmm. presents you blessings in the form of swear words and hard work. Which wow. is why most black Christians miss their blessings because it looked like swear words, it looked like motherfucker, and I need some coveralls. Damn. So that was when, big. Yes. That was so big. when that this big. when this motherfucker shows up with this truck and he got on painty painted up coveralls and the truck got a, a the fender dent. Now, mm -mm, mm -mm, that ain't what I want. You know that nigga own his own paint sign, right? Paint company? Exactly. Right. right. And you just let him go on right by. Right. And then the guy you want. The your description just because there are a lot of grown ass women with that description. Still have that Yoo! list. Yep, meet them every day. So, but that dude exists. Mm -hmm. He's just on the far end of the bell curve. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. And he knows he that knows he is there. on the far end of the bell curve. So you thinking you found diamonds and you did, but take a number. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until I get ready to sell, settle down, and just be with you. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm what degreed, educated, single, no kids, <laughs> corporate status, and bread. I'm fucking Ev them all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. <laughs> Right, who ordered the hush puppies with theirs? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? Exactly. Yes. Callers, man, look at the lines. We got to get them. Caller, <laughs> you're on the line. What's your name and where you calling from? Hello? My name's Hustle from Miami. Hustle from Miami. Hustle. Welcome to the Voice of Reason. Speak on it. Yeah, man. You know, I usually like to wait, take it in, and uh, call in, but this time, y'all speak it to me right now. This shit is cracking. <laughs> this shit is cracking right now. All right, bro. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, you know, you and Jeff, y'all like older brothers to me, man. So oh, thank you, bro. Some game. I appreciate it, man. Hey. You always drop. How old yours. are you, man? How old are you? 32. 32? That shit. Yeah, I can be so old. That's a wise dude, though. It's a wise cat. All right, go be ahead. 32, this boy. Shit. Hit us with it, hustle. <laughs> so, so let me know, man. How do you work with women when accountability is over convenience? Oh, wow. Hey. Ooh. Hey. Whoa. Ooh. Let me, okay. Let me, let me, let me take a stab at it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's an elusive monster. <laughs> so let me do it this way. Accountability has to be observed, mm -hmm. right? It has to the your personal accountability has to affect them. Mm -hmm. This is just my opinion. Accountability isn't a philosophy that you can teach. Absolutely. Uh, wow. You have to have an experience of accountability. It has to be like who you are. And I always make the distinction, the religious distinction. You got people who practice religion, and then you got people who are the embodiment of the teachings. Mm -hmm. That's different. A motherfucker who's practicing is in church mad because somebody dressed the same as <laughs> right. them. That's a motherfucker practicing. Right, they they looking at. I can't believe this bitch got on teal. <laughs> this bitch is practicing. Right. Yes, <laughs> you see what I'm saying. Right. So again, if you want to affect a woman's ability to be accountable, just like a, and I'm not saying women are children. So let me preface this, mm -hmm. but adults <laughs> model each other too. Mm -hmm. Just like a, just like children model parents, right. adults model each other as well. So. In a relationship, you'll see adults modeling the way each other speak, right. they're modeling each other's slang, you know, just vibing the way each other vibes, you know, jokes and what sh shit that's funny, the way they speak, all of that. 
So she got to be able to model accountability in you. And if you find one that is resistant to your accountability, now there's a lesson that's being taught both ways. Right. Right? Bidirectionally. The lesson is there's some place in your spirit that isn't quite as accountable as you thought it was. Mm -hmm. And that's why she's there to point that out. But then conversely, if you're striving to figure it out, that should carry an energy and a charge that would motivate her right. to be like, oh, wow, I, I need to call myself to the floor, too. Right. A lot yeah. of time that defensiveness. Oh, we'll get into that later. You want to you want to. Well, no, you think you said it beautifully Jeff. that it does need to be modeled. And particularly, I'm going to say this. I can't always speak for all black women because I'm biracial. So I get it from my white mama. So ain't, I can't listen, speak for all black no, women. Ain't no such thing as black uh, biracial. I this saying, is a black woman, right? You see the I mean, I'm proudly a black woman, but some on? of what I okay. got carried inside me is from a very crazy white mama. So <laughs> she gonna blame white people. She my blaming the white half. My mama is I love it. But I love it. it's the white in me. The white in me makes me unaccountable. Right? Uh, yeah. My adult <laughs> life, I've only been with black men. So <laughs> in my adult life, I've only been with black men. And what you're saying is, you're married right now, married. I'm, I am legally getting divorced. Yeah! What up? <laughs> this just I was like, ooh, am I ready to say that on the air? Damn. Okay. All right. Don't drop okay. it in the DM. We just discussed. No okay, dick okay. pics in the DM, please. Too late. <laughs> I know, like sure. three, just, four just came through. It just no. Sense. no, you know, uh, 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 yes, yes, sidebar. Here's how you get rid of dick pics real quick. Uh -oh. Okay. When a person sends you a dick pic, you tell them, this is the last one you send without consequence. When you get the next one, you go, hey, everybody. So and so sent me their penis, and since he was sharing it with me, I'd like to share it with you all and put it right up on your page. I mean, I might consider that. You will that. get no more dick pics. I will definitely consider I promise that. You. A nigga Thank don't you, want Jeff his. Brown. A nigga hey, wanted to I'm show you, right you his dick, <laughs> not Facebook. The average nigga don't want his little cashew <laughs> posted. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of here in this cashew. Look, I can't believe you pulled that out in front of strangers. <laughs> Oh Nobody but a medical doctor should see that. <laughs> and a whore. She's because you're paying her. Cashew. Uh, <laughs> so we cashew. Real How do we go from accountability yeah. to dick? Oh, right. I didn't even know you were still Jeff. there. Now. <laughs> right. That's how. I was like, I was trying this to come on back. I didn't bring in dick back. pics. I just came up with a solution. This is what right. Jeff does. He, no, he takes yeah, us places. In regards to that, accountability. <laughs> Your and Uncle Jeff. with black men is, is exactly what Zoe said, is that you have to be yeah. modeling it to one, one another. And if you're if one of you is lacking or both of you is lacking, it is a reflection. But also, that's a huge red flag in your relationship if it's going to keep working. You have to be self-reflective to see what is lacking. And if it's something that the other person can't take criticism in or you're asking for it to be different or you need to change something different and, you and you're not willing to change it, that also means the relationship is probably not, not going to keep working. But listen, if somebody is really not in the relationship... Mm -hmm. For the reasons you think. Right. Wow. A lot of times motherfuckers is in the relationship to hide, to cover, to yes. conceal. Absolutely. Right? Wounds. Niggas be dating open wounds. Sometimes you're dating a hobo sexual. <laughs> that's true. That too. Hobo, that's them hobo sexuals is a beast. Yeah. So true. So that's why I always say figure out the coping mechanism yes. of the person you're dealing with. Before you get yeah. serious. True. Niggas ask right. terrible yeah. questions in the beginning. Yes. When you start asking real questions and somebody gets defensive, we now did, you know. Did, now, mm -hmm. now you know. We yeah. we got red flags to deal with. Or yeah. the master of speaking in circles with platitudes. Uh, worst. That's the worst. Yeah. People who refuse to get deeper. People who refuse to open up, mm -hmm. find vulnerability. These are all flags here. When yes. you see, when you first see a person, imagine it this way. That, that feeling, that stomach feel, that is a bullet that is rushing towards you at 1,200 miles an hour. And it stops short of your heart wow. until you open it. And then when you open it, that son of a bitch go <laughs> and, and, and does the, the damn damage it's going to do. So <laughs> yeah. when we say you dodge the bullet, you didn't dodge the bullet from the, the distance before you can peep the game is how much you dodge the bullet by. If you can dodge that bullet at Denny's the night after the club, great. Don't be trying to dodge that bullet after you done bought the fucking ring. That's...
but I don't know if it's put. Like, I'm paraphrasing. It's probably not like that in Zoe's book, but it's probably covered. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not. Caller, you're on the line. Welcome to the Voice of Reason. What's your name and where you calling from? Speak on it. This is uh, Furion from uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Oh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Yeah. How are so, you? Uh, I got a few points. I got a few points. I just want to grab them off to you real quick. Uh, first thing I know is about in couples today, they um they often attack each other first when they start an argument or a debate or something wow. like that. Mm. Um, that's the first thing I noticed. Uh, second thing I know is that nobody's solution oriented in in the debate at all. They just kind of want to dump their baggage out and you listen to me, no, you listen to me, you know, you listen to me. That's all that's been said is, uh, you know, dumping dumping the baggage out. Um, and you got two people solving problems emotionally. And I kind of want to kind of expand wow. on that is we got a generation of men who were raised by women, unfortunately, you know, mm. in a single single mom situation. And what happens is you get those men, they know how they, mm. they see their mom solving problems and she might solve it in an emotional manner. Just like you said, children are children modeling. Are adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when he gets older, his problem solving is not logical, which is, you know, mostly men's mentality is logical. His problem solving skills are emotional. Wow. So what ends up happening is, you know, you hear women always say things like, I don't want you to solve the issue. I just want you to listen to me. Mm-hmm. Yep. So in his mind, when he gets to argument with her, he's, I don't want to, we don't want to solve the problem. I just want you to listen to me. So now you got two people that just want somebody to listen. With and feminine conflict resolution. The issue Absolutely. That's a great point, brother. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much no for that. No conflict resolution skills at all. So. Wow. That's a... Uh, I think, I think I think I got a thing out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Let me ask the question: Are you saying women don't have conflict resolution skills, or women no, can't teach do, their male say, children conflict say. resolution skills? I just need to understand in depth, and I'm going to get out your way. Go ahead, go deeper. No, no, uh, I'm not going to say they don't have conflict resolution skills. It's just that you know, women they they are more emotional, and so and on the men's side, they are more logical. So you have men. Um, who can't really process their emotions properly as well, or as well as women can because they've been handicapped. Well, but right. then again, we have so to ask not, the question. Not, we have to we have uh, to beg the question on the logic side of the game. Are we sold on the fact that women are not logical or as logical as men? Are we really sold on that? Is that a foregone conclusion? Is that a fact? I mean, or not, is that a cultural belief? Is that mm, is that the boogeyman? Is that the is the floor open? To, I think I think yeah. I think I think it's a fifty fifty split on on that. Yeah, I mean because I'm I think not, that's, not, I think gonna, there's an assumption I'm not say there. All illogical, right? I'm not gonna say they're all illogical, but just they 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 do they do deal with uh, on an emotional side more more often than not. This is deep. Callers, I want to hear from some ladies. Ladies, call in if yeah, you, yeah. you want to contest that. Any horrible that. broads? Do we have any horrible broads? <laughs> Three, I just want to, he did say something that was really valuable to me, which was bringing up the point, one, are, are men naturally like, or, you know, more inclined to be more logical thinkers? I, I'm probably going to eat up for this, but that's fine. I no. think, yes, we're wired naturally to have different purposes on earth, even as like male, female roles, mammal wise. Mm-hmm. So typically, yes, I think women are more inclined to think emotionally um, before logically, so we're logical creatures. We're equally able to be intellectual, but I think we we default logical more than to a motherfucker emotional. when you're going through that email. You right? Amen. To okay. So, but, but my point <laughs> my point here is, regardless of it's male, female, who's more you know thinking one way or the other. The what he said was knowing if the person is solution based or just venting when you go into the conversation, and that's one of the issues I had with my soon to be ex was. You know, I had to I had to identify it like literally just we'd be halfway into an argument that I didn't even know was an argument. I was like, I thought we was just talking and now it's an argument um, because I'm very solution based. I hear you say a problem. I'm very empathetic. And I'm like, ooh, let me help fix the problem. Right. So I was very solution based every time he would, you know, get to saying something I'd be like, OK, baby, like I hear you say this. Let's do this. Like and he'd just be so upset. He's like, you're not listening because all he wanted to do was vent. All he wanted to do was just be heard. He wasn't in for a problem, even in for a solution. He wasn't even sure it was a problem. He was just trying to talk to talk. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm. So I just got really accustomed to just asking that up top. Like, oh, are, is this a problem you're about to talk about? Or you just need me to shut up and listen. And I just, I had to learn that about him. So if we all were more aware of that. Like, are you just talking to talk or or you want me to help you with something? Well, preface that in the beginning of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, 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 in the words of a good friend of mine, I could smoke a bag of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that nigga. What I think is a little unfair to do is to paint men or women in the boxes of logic or emotion. Right. I would say if you're going to make a sweeping generalization, women, men are more basic thinkers. And women are more complex in Mul- their multi-dimensional yes, levels. Yes, in their approach to the same thing. Now, here's the question: <laughs> Are you ba- are you Albert Einstein? In here we go. <laughs> an, in, in, a, in a World War One airplane, or are you uh, a toddler in the USS Enterprise? Mm. Wow, that's the question. Okay, wow. yeah, woman, you have been given. This complex thinker, mm-hmm. what are you going to do with it? Are you going to just run to the emotion side of this thinker and work from there? Because you do realize that you have the capacity to look at 15 things. The problem is, if I'm your leader, can you bring me these 15 things you see and decide to do wow. what I basically want to do with these 15 wow. things? Mm. Wow. 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 Mm. Man, if y'all don't listen, <laughs> it's important that we break all of this down because at break the root, down. at the root of the problem in the African American community, at the root of the problem, whether it be the killings in Chicago, mm. killing in nine. killings here in LA, shit, right. killing niggas over by LA. You know, my home, my I got a kid that I mentor. Right, he's Teach he's he's a friend of my son, and you know they went to high friend school together. You know, on bas on the basketball team together. He got shot the uh the couple a week ago. Oh man, is he did he pass? Did he is he all right? He got he didn't pass, but it was random and dumb. Ain't they all? Just oh, God. I'm outside. Damn, changing my tire. Oh what? And in, in front of his house. I'm outside in front of my house changing my tire and random niggas roll up. What set you from? Oh, wow. wow. I'm not from no set. You know, I'm in college. Okay, give me, your, no give me your phone and I'm going to shoot you in your leg. Wow. They took the phone and shot him in the leg. They could have killed him. So now the real problem is, okay, somebody mothered and fathered or didn't father right. that dude. Or maybe that dude was raised in a in a dual parent situation that was traumatic, that was uh, disturbed, that was fucked up in some kind of way. You see what I'm saying? Right. So what's wrong with our relationships that at the end of the day produce those kinds of minds, those kinds of beings? So that's why I'm so hell bent on the relationship side of the game to say, if we take initiative to change the way we evaluate each other and then or or even understand what evaluation is, understand what judgment is, understand what critique is, understand what constructive criticism is, understand your communication style versus the woman you're dealing with, understand the baggage. All of this shit has to be taken into account before we make little little pookie rock <laughs> i think we're going okay i'm going to say this as fast as i can go ahead i think we i think we're going to have to first off figure out that we can't keep playing this game that we play with society and the american dream and the picket fence with the 2.5 kids this is where shit adds up even worse for us because for us all of our people one half of what makes that was taken away from us. Our fathers were locked up for nothing, and then we're criticized. Our leaders are taken, Mm -hmm. and then we're criticized for being lost. Mm -hmm. What we need to do, in my opinion, is re-look at the whole game and go, okay, this uh, monogamy thing may not work. Okay, Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, It's not enough for me to just father my kids because it's millions of brothers behind bars. Mm -hmm. So that means I got to find a way to reach out to these kids, and their mama got to find a way to let me do it. Even so. if I don't notice this this woman, I got to find boys mm-hmm. to help. I got to find girls to help. Right on. Because we are not, we are trying to measure ourselves. We are l- hyenas trying to measure ourselves as these giraffes. We, we're, we're, no, no, that's not you. Mm-hmm. You're 
you're over here. You're in war. Your bombs is dropping on you. Mm. And you trying to compare yourself to somebody that's sitting by the side of the pool. That y'all y'all ain't got the same shit going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 respect the war. People, mm. respect the war. Mm. If it's a brother that's going to help you, let him help you. Sisters, I say this all the time. If you got a young boy and he needs guidance and you don't have nobody positive around you, find a barbershop, mm-hmm. make arrangements with the owner, and let that little boy sweep up hair. You so, know how much game he could get at the woo! barbershop about just dude being the dude code? Just... Oh, this is the Dow of Dude. That's the only place left. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just drop his off at at the damn barbecue. The drop Dow his, of Dude. Drop his little ass off in the Dow of Dude. That's a Definitely. Book. But Dow I just love that Jeff just basically said polygamous parenting. That's basically what you said. Uh, it's like, got we just need to We need to we redo do, the village. We do. We do. The well, village I got has a been village. destroyed. I have a village, man. Yes. Oh yeah. As do I. Yes. But yes. everybody don't. Yeah. And the village is is necessary. Absolutely. Because kids get to a certain age where they tune you out. They're not listening anymore. They're, they're so used to your voice and everything, your philosophy. They want to go out and test the waters. You got to surround your kids with dudes, of all, men and women of all ages, that reflect what you say, but just in a different way. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. they fuck-ups is the same. Yeah. Your complaints is the same. And they used to, and it gets common to them. You need to let them take them same fuck-ups to different ways to look at it. Yes. Right. Shit. Caller. You're on the air. This is the voice of reason. What's your name and where you're calling from? Speak on it. Uh, Raymond from Detroit. D in the building. Detroit. What up, Raymond? What up, man? Speak on it, man. Hey, man. I think that the, uh, as it relates to the dynamic between black men and black women, I always try to put it in a historical context. Mm-hmm. I think it's important that we point out that the black man and the, the relationship between the black man and the black woman was interrupted. Mm, and so, wow. You know, the black man being stripped from the family caused the black woman to raise her sons in a way where she wanted to protect them. She didn't raise the black son to go out and do what he was supposed to do, which is the first law of nature, self-preservation, which is to fight, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm saying is, Black men, or in general, us as black men, we grow up under single mothers and stuff, and we grow up and women expect us to fight for them and the children, but we weren't raised to fight at all. So we don't understand that. Mm. That's big. Mm. That's ugly. That's ugly right and there. So, and, and it's been a vicious cycle of that going on. I'm not saying that that's the situation for every single black man, but I think culturally that's been the situation. A vicious cycle has been created where black men can't even, we're not raised to fight at all for ourselves and our people. And so, you know, let's say you'll get a Barack Obama. They love Barack because he became what they think is successful, but he didn't fight. He didn't have to fight them. That's the idea of a black man now. Wow. It's not a Malcolm. It's not a Muhammad Ali. It's not Farrakhan. Who is it? You know, it's, it's Bruno Mars. It's Barack Obama. <laughs> it's it's Barack Obama. It's Bruno Mars. Who else is it? Man, all these sipping ass niggas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was going to say Kaepernick or something like hey man, that. Just, you know, no, Kaepernick, no. You know, they want someone who isn't. He's not the physically thing, fighting. The first he's off, they scared of Kaepernick. Okay, okay first off, They're yeah. scared of Kaepernick. They rather. I mean, they really are. They'd rather take. Listen, let me just say this real quick. God damn it. Let me just. I. I had a beautiful woman six or seven years ago. She knows my nature. You know what she told me? And I I chalk it up to her being young and me being dumb. But you know what she said to me? She said, man, if you keep talking the way you talk, they going to come get you. They going to kill you. And that was her fear. She was listen, you think Coretta Scott King didn't have the same feeling? Right. You think Betty Shabazz didn't have the didn't have Man. the same knowledge? But they didn't can get I in the way it? of the purpose. Right. Right. They just can got behind. I, I got you, homeboy. Hold on now. Let, 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 I'm, I'm gonna come right back to you, Pam. My bad. They didn't get in the way of the purpose. Right. They got behind the purpose. Absolutely. And served as fuel for him to reach it. Right. 
but the fear of losing what you think you got. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I do. It fucks up. It fucks up the energy. Look at the phone lines. Let me let this brother finish, and then I'll get back. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> but it, it touches back on what you just said. Black women, in reality, they really don't want black men to fight for them. It, it touches on what you just said. Mm, say more. But as it relates to providing, and we we can't provide that environment, that in culture, that culture for them, because we weren't raised to fight for them, and so I, I think. They really don't want us to fight for them, but they don't realize that we have to, we're going to have to learn how to like rise above what they're saying and just go out and do it. And just sense. do it. I think, to some I extent, think they do want us to fight for them. I'm just going to play a little devil's advocate. I think they <laughs> do want us to fight for them. I just think they don't know how in or what which that way looks like. or what right. it looks like. How right. do it, how they want us to engage the fight. Can you engage the right. fight as king while I keep your throne? Uh, no. Oh, my God. No, I can't. Okay. If you right. want me to lead, I'm going to need you to get out of the way. Wow. <laughs> okay, so watch. Let's do it another way. Brother, thank you for the call. We appreciate the call. Thank you so much. That was Heat. Raymond from Detroit brought the fire. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. That was Heat. Let's look at it another way. I know everybody wants to talk about ancient Egypt, but it ain't just ancient Egypt. It's, right. it's, it's ancient Africa. Now, I'm not, you know, just... Just follow this metaphor. Co-regency. You can't be co-regents unless there's mutual respect mm. right. of the position that mm. each person is in in that relationship. Right. That's the fucking physical manifestation of God, my queen. And there right. is the physical manifestation of God, the king. That's how the Egyptians saw it. What's really cold about it, when you go back, I forgot which dynasty, but when you go back and look at the throne that the king sat on, do you know the throne was Isis, excuse me, Osset? The actual throne is her. She is the throne. He sits on the throne. She is the foundation. Go back and look at the throne. The nigga is sitting, the negus is sitting on her. That's another level. This nigga's here. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. They don't understand it. Usir and Aset. Osiris, right? And Isis. You know how white people do. They, they rename everything. Mm -hmm. But if you study, go back to India. Every god had a woman. Yes. Physical manifestation. Every Brahma had Shakti or somebody. There was a woman counterpart. Yep. A female counterpart. In America, there is no more counterpart. There's just competition and evaluation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you see where yeah. this goes now. Basically, yeah. I'm evaluating whether or not... You did better than me. And right. if you didn't, damn you. And if you did, damn you. Well, yeah, if you did, <laughs> right. damn you. If you didn't, fuck you. Or, right. or, or I'm evaluating whether or not you've reached the uh, a stage or a plateau that was written for us by our oppressor that this that defines success. Right. Somebody else's playbook. Sing. Right. <laughs> Turn it up for Jeff so he can sing. He wants to sing. Somebody else's playbook by Jeff. Oh, uh, snap your hands now. I'll snap your fingers now. I'll snap your fingers now. Uh, I wanted to take you to a different place. Somewhere where we look at somebody else's face. Everybody say that money talks, but what does it say? Wow. Does it say that you and I are doing this the right way? Right way. Why do you compare me to your white balls? Balls. How come we can't just get this thing off the ground? Uh. <laughs> Ow! The ground. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Ladies and gentlemen, that was by the uncles. Right. The uncles. Right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh. <laughs> the two tops in this bitch right now. <laughs> 
No, man. Hey, ser- seriously, seriously, bro. I don't think that we are going to be able to get this relationship shit together until we decide our surrounding. We haven't. We haven't. I don't think as as people, as as couples, before you can effectively do what your day asked for, you have to look at what you're surrounded by. How are we going to effectively uh, uh, execute this outing if we don't under, if we don't agree that we bowling, fishing, camping, ice skating? Because all of them take different shit. Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. now, me and you are here. Yes. But what are we trying to do? And most importantly, why the fuck are we trying to do it? Right. What is the purpose? What of is the, the purpose thing? of this thing? Why? Before I tell you, you ain't shit. Well, I ain't shit at what? Right. There's certain <laughs> shit I really ain't shit at. <laughs> right. What am I not shit at? Right. What are we right. doing? <laughs> All right. Listen, we just got to take a quick break. We need a break. It's an hour straight of straight heat. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will continue this conversation. Oh, God. Black men and women. Do do we even like each other anymore? Do we even we give do, a fuck? We do. We do. Why are black men going to Brazil? Mm. What's the difference between that Brazilian ass and the ass that's already here? Ooh. <sighs> Rough. We'll be back in 2.2 <laughs> seconds, ladies and gentlemen. We'll holla. All right. Jesus, I, I can't even take a moment to myself. Good Lord. I was in the bathroom with right, a fist he's full of Jeff. Fire. No, he's and sending now. the fire out right now. I was Jesus. like, ooh, look at that. You don't tweet saying, that out. Hey, man, we got we to gotta, we gotta have a real conversation. Oh, yes, sir. We have sure. to have a real conversation. And that's why we're trying to do it. As a black man, I'm here to answer this question, ladies. Jeff is as well. I'm yes. just going to throw his ass under the bus yeah. real quick. <laughs> Ask me what? Ladies, call us right now and tell us how we have black men, how black men have failed you. What did the brothers do? (laughs) Tell me what did the brothers do? 323-230-4610. I need you to call us. Call us up now. Because I I, want to take accountability for it. I want to give some clarity, some context, some understanding. Understanding. For whatever you call and tell us that we did to fail you. What the fuck did we do In what way? I'm going to start with the sister in the room. Oh. I was going to say, like, dang, I do love black men. You've only dated black men, but in what way have we failed you? Oh. In your estimation, from your experience. Yeah. Thankfully, I was going to say, my first two, I, my first two, like, adult exes were amazing. They were great black men, actually. They're everything you could want. You know, people hated me, like, what? You have been engaged three times to three great black men. Ah, you're terrible. You don't have the same problems as me. Um, but I will say, I guess in this last relationship as a reflection of wh- how a black man has failed me is don't tell me you want something if you don't. Just don't misrepresent. So there was a point in our relationship where I was just like, OK, kind of shit or get off the pot. It was a quality amount of time, though. A, a real, real quality white girl amount of time <laughs> 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 that I said, you know, at this point, if you're not going to marry me, let somebody else. You know, I had been engaged twice before him. And what? Ha- OK. So I, you know, I said at this point, we've done everything to make the relationship what we said we wanted it to be. This is I, I've gotten pretty much as good as I'm going to get um, at this point. So make it known like what your intention is. Is it marriage or not? And if it's not, I'm, I'm fine with moving along. So um, at that point, you know, we did get, you know, we got married, whatever. That's where we were at. Um, and it turns out, you know, why we're separating is that was not the case. Like, you know. This is this me the presentation where we're at what first we had off, you know he didn't want so I was just saying if you just don't want it don't say you want it if so you don't want monogamy off, let, let me, if you don't want that let me break this down don't do it because there's 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 a couple of layers of there's so many layers. foolery in this yeah there's some skullduggery in them. yeah number one men do misrepresent a lot we well, do so do lie. women yeah yeah all right let me just say men right. do lie a lot yeah <laughs> yeah. That's a certain type of man. That's a certain character in a man or even a man at a certain developmental stage in his life. Absolutely. Number one. Number two, stop with the bullshit. Almost ultimatum of where we at and where we should be. A lot of times that is a symptom of discontent. You, I, I agree. You're in a relationship I agree. with a good motherfucker and willing to throw it away if you don't get the concept you want. Mm, yes, 
yes and no. Which is compared to what? But do, right. do you understand what I'm saying? Like, for yeah. instance, monogamy is changing. Marriage is changing. There's a lot. There's shit. There's as many cohabitating motherfuckers raising some pretty functional people. Yes, absolutely. Raising some pretty good kids without the construct you see what I'm Without saying? Without the financial Absolutely. construct. Of marriage and yes. all that other shit. Absolutely. They're working. They're taking care of their kids. Kids is in private school. Kids is doing well. They're okay. They're well adjusted. Sometimes women want the fantasy, the concept. Right. Yeah. That's what I say. Who are you married to? Who are you dating? An idea or a man? Mm. And sometimes women will throw the man away right. for the concept. For the idea. That's why I always say, do you have what the symbol symbolizes or do you have the symbol? Well, Because there's a lot of motherfuckers mm. with the symbol that are devoid of what it symbolizes. Exactly. And, I and agree. We, I think what women are selling or what women, yes, this is what women are selling is the uh, American dream picket fence 2.5 kids paradigm. The reason that men are not buying that is because we have been reading the fine print in the in the in the lives of motherfuckers <laughs> who have half of their shit now, or who live in a box under a fucking bridge. Mm -hmm. That's uh, there's an uh, an old joke of Jeff. Marriage Browns. equals brokenness. Yes. Uh, <laughs> do you know why divorce is so expensive? God damn it, cause it's worth it. Is some dude when you see a rich dude go, uncle, it is worth fifteen of my thirty million dollars to just be away from you. That's what he said. Here, here, bitch, here. Fit peace is gonna cost me fifteen million dollars. When we see say enough about, of that, say more about the peace terrorist. Oh yeah, yeah. And the reason, <laughs> yes, I was married to one. A peace terrorist is an individual because this is these are the jobs. The woman is the peacemaker. You right. make peace. You make my home peaceful. The man is the peacekeeper. Oh, you're going to do what she say, or you're going to feel the full weight of my wrath. Wow. This house is peaceful. Break your ass in here. She ain't responsible for keeping the peace. I'm going to get with Eddie the Machete and hack you up, and we're going to have some we'll, funny taste. We, we'll sausage. deal with what happens inside the right, building. Right, right, right. <laughs> now, if she's in charge of peace and you find yourself unpeaceful, a lot of times it's because you were a woman that say, you know what? I got the peace and I'm going to hold it hostage until every one of my demands are met. Ooh, holding the peace it, hostage. Yes, you're going to hold yeah. peace hostage. I will not negotiate with another terrorist. I will not. Right. Mm. No, I agree. And I think that that does describe a lot of women holding the peace hostage. Yeah. Absolutely. And to go back to Zoe, because he would call me out. He's like, oh, that's only part of the truth. Da, da, da. I will explain. Yeah. The, got to, for, got for me, it wasn't the legal <laughs> system of marriage, but for me as a Christian woman, it was like I had gotten spiritually to where I, I had to be and where I was settled. And I was like, mm -hmm. what marriage looked like for me was mm. we're doing all of these things except the one thing, which was confession. Your confession, you're confessing to me that we're each other's. So that was my standard of marriage. And that was where I said, just don't lie to me. If you, if we're not confessing, we're really each other's and you really want to be other people's too. Mm -hmm. Don't lie to me. Okay. You could have just kept it real. Cause again, my other backstory is that I, I was a sex addict in, a, in recovery. So if you really don't want to just be with me, let me know. Cause I could have been with a whole bunch of other people. Right, too. right, like, right. Why, well, okay. Why you know, it's real, you know, it's it's real evil right now. It's stupid. You know, it's really evil right now is or maybe I should just bring it up. Fuck it. Do it. <laughs> maybe he wanted you. Because you were a sex addict. Well, obviously. Just maybe but he just wanted it. to hold me to him. That's what I'm saying. Like, maybe that was the just trophy. it. This that is the perfect it. situation. Okay, when did you tell him that? Ravenous what? dick hunting? When did you tell her? When did you tell him? When did you use the words sex addict to describe yourself? Actually, this is very much later on. I just use nympho. In no, the no, no. Okay, okay. All right, fine. That'll work. That'll later. work. That okay. always no, 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 no. works okay. on a man. Yes, but that's my point. The, the at, what, a nympho. at what point did no, you use that? Most women lie, though. Most women lie and say they're a nympho just to get men's attention because they know sex attracts men and they lie and it turns out men are disappointed. They're like, oh, your libido is low. You're full of crap, girl. But where I got him was it was really high. Okay, okay. Like, here, I'm at it every day. Okay, here's my point. Okay, here's cool. my point. Okay, uh, okay. Knock the bragging off. I'm a married man or I would really drive and try your monkey ass out. All right, now. Oh, wow. Oh, if shit. I would let yeah. you, Jeff. Shit. Damn. <laughs> okay. Jeff? Anyway, now. There's a line. Uh, the Jeff? line is behind Jeff, you. Jeff, you're tiptoeing on the line. No, no, no. Jeff. The line's behind you. <laughs> the line's <laughs> Get this nigga. Anyway, Jeff, I'm your so, friend. Yeah. The line's behind you. No. Okay. No. Here's what I'm saying. 
uh, <laughs> from the first time mm-hmm. you uttered the words, oh, yes, and I need an arm a nympho. Till today, till today, <laughs> in the back of his head, them words is burnt the way you said them when they came out I'm your goddamn mouth. Oh, my God. Baby. Yes. And he still I cheated out of this house. Okay. Dead. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Do it again. Do it again. Okay, now I this is you. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. He's driving. You're you. And now as the words come out of your mouth, watch I'm what. <laughs> Those words are burned <laughs> in his fucking soul. And you pretty? I will I will date a mid I will date a nymphomaniac cyclops. Do you understand that? <laughs> I will date a bitch with an eye in the middle of her forehead if she says she wanna fuck every time I wanna fuck. That is the problem. Yes, we are going off way off the rails now. Yes. Nice girls. Nice Absolutely. girls. Nice girls. I knew it would happen. This is where <laughs> this is where freaks and side chicks got you beat. Nice girls can only fuck under ambient conditions. Oh, oh the, the bills are all paid and, and there's no drama. I don't feel like fucking you, nigga, because exactly. shit. Exactly. The cable's off. A hood rat will fuck you with the all helicopter the over it. the house. Come out. Come out. Contavion Johnson. Don't, don't pay attention to that. Right, right. Go on, get this ass before they lock you up. See? So real. The yes. struggle is real. <laughs> a nice girl nymphomaniac? What the fuck? I don't even know who your man is, but I don't know how you could make this work. <laughs> who was the stuffiest white teacher you've ever had? What was her name, Jeff? The stuffiest white teacher? Just the prude. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that's oh got That's going to have to be Miss Dorothy Toomey, biology, Lynn Bloom High School. Miss Dorothy Ooh, Toomey. That bitch sounds stuffy. Yes. Moth balls and everything, oh, right? I'm sorry, Nancy Toomey and her 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 uh, uh, mate, because we, we knew they was, right. was Dorothy Sarmiento, Miss oh, Sarmiento. Right, right. right. And yeah. you, I know you remember some stuffy white lady that was just... These are the rules. You did not sign this last piece of paper, so you can't go on the field trip. Oh, yeah. She was married to the stuffy white man, Mr. and Mrs. Lavelle. So let me ask you this. (laughs) Because of her success, has the black woman become the stuffy white woman? Ooh. uh, Maybe. All these motherfucking... Expectations and all these rules and all this pressure. Get the shit together, nigga. Get your shit together. All yeah. this. Yeah. Well, Has she-, she become that stuffy motherfucker too serious? Taking herself too serious. Oh, absolutely. I'm, these are questions. Ladies, I'm not saying this is you. I'm saying, could you have slipped a little bit over into that space? And this is why it's so difficult. One of the questions that came from Essence was, and this came from clinicians, Mm -hmm. some of the the feedback that was coming back from some of the brothers was, the sisters are too uptight, too tight. Other women seem more fun, more carefree, more go with the flow. With with the sisters, the sense of urgency is beyond our sisters. Talk to talk to talk to talk. I'm just saying, and our sisters just living in a mindset of scarcity that's scaring the men away. Hi, my name is Stephanie. It's scaring scaring them into, like you said, just putting the timer on versus enjoying the time. And I think that's where I was like, Wow. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Jules. Really? I mean, they're they're more worried about the time or the clicking talk than just enjoying the time, like being present. And that's why I joke about the white side. The white side, yeah. I joke about it. Like, I love to do stuff like go bowling, (laughs) jet skiing, you know, zip lining, all of that stuff. But people always joke, like, when I do those things, like, I like to go on cruises and I like to vacation and stuff. I'll be like, I'll be the only black girl doing any of the things, right? Yeah, because you ain't worried about your hair. One, I'm not worried about the hair at all. Don't care. (laughs) I really don't. But two, like, I grew up around those activities. It didn't seem not culturally relevant because I grew up in a white community doing a lot of those things. So you're saying you're... I grew up culturally white white before I became a very proud black woman. I'm confused. So, yes. (laughs) Is this racial dollars all in this motherfucker? No, what I'm saying is that's typically... (laughs) That's stereotypically the blocks we go into. The compartmentalization is that... Black women don't like those things. And I think we need to 
allow them the space, one, to enjoy time. So whatever it is Black men need to do to help us disarm, to make sure we're just being present in the time. And then also black women just need to be not afraid to try new things. Well, you know what? Really are. Okay, you tell us. Camping. I get it. Like, I, there's bears and scary things and bugs and whatever. But okay, get a camper. Like, get a RV. Okay. Try something well, new. Well, well, <laughs> what you're saying is we need to be able to do that. But first, we got to be down on one knee, like in all the 80s action movies going, okay, I've got to stop this clock. Which one? Is it the red or the blue wire? Sure, you shouldn't Slowly feel like you're disarming a bomb. Yes. You shouldn't feel like you're disarming a bomb. Hi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it will feel like you are. Yeah, absolutely. Is, my name is Patrice, and I'm a Pisces. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. And I like to go skiing and hiking. TikTok, 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 TikTok. We don't know. We we can see the clock ticking. We can see it right you behind can, your yes. eyes. That fucking clock is ticking. I mean, yes, that's Watch why this. you get the whole inventory. You get like a you know a Vogue magazine questionnaire on the first date. Like they want to know your sign, your birthday, your favorite color, your favorite food, all in the same day. Here's an experiment. Who are you? Me. Yes. I'm me. Uh, say more. <laughs> this is an experiment. I want everybody. I see them. Just put them yes. on, and we'll get to them in a second. Who are you? I'm a scholar. I'm a curious talker. That's it. A woman of God who's curious about life. That's what I seek. My grandma always said, babies don't look like other people. They'd be like, she looks like Cheryl. She looks like David. No, that baby looks like you. I am me. I love that answer. And the reason why I asked the question, a lot of people will answer that question by saying what they do. What you do is not who you are. She didn't say, oh, I have a master's degree. She didn't say, I went to school here. I didn't. She didn't lead with, with her resume, with her with her social status or her resume. She led with herself. Right. Now, if you lead with yourself in relationship, mm. you're going to start to relate. Wow. <laughs> It's true, it's true. If you lead with your resume, mm. you're going to start the relationship by evaluating. There's a book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Yep, good book. And in that book, they talk about, um, what is that? The weatherproofer, weatherproofing the house. Where you're walking around the house looking for all of the imperfections in the house. Right? Okay, I need to caulk that window. Need to caulk that window. I need to fix these, uh, you know, I need to insulate this. There's a crack in the foundation. I'm fucking with the shit out here. Ladies and men, you can't walk around your partner like that. Right, no. You can't be looking at the rental car, looking at all the dings. You can't do that. First off, their ding is related to your trigger. Absolutely. Which is your curriculum. That's why you're in relationship with this person in the first place. I don't want this car because of the ding. Well, the ding is related to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're attracted to this motherfucker. Women, sisters, and men. I'm leading with sisters because you're so fucking powerful. You got to break up with the social standard. True. It's painful, though, but it's true. That shit has more say in your relationship than your understanding of your intuitive spiritual process for why you motherfuckers is in the same place at the same time. (laughs) Woo! Yes. (laughs) I'm just saying. It's true. We're looking for someone who's above us most of the time. And you're like, well, how are you going to find him if you're not there? So, Oh, my God. First off, you can't have what you're not. Right. Well, I... I, (laughs) You can, but you got to do a lot to get there. You cannot have (laughs) what you're not. And not resume. Again. Again. Right. Well, Uh, right. uh, You see uh, what uh, I'm saying? Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's... I I like that. Uh, I think single men. When that thing Zoe asks, who are you? If you don't get this answer, here's the generic response. Baby, you just told me who you are at work. Who are you when you come and kick your shoes off? Right. Are you still the girl at work? Thank you so much for coming out with me tonight. I had a whole bunch of fun. If she can't, if she can't let go of the girl at work and understand that you just want her to be your girl, and you want to be her dude. And you can be the girl to the CEO of goddamn Viacom if it's a woman. You can be her dude, 
and be a street sweeper if when she get home, she can just be a girl and you can just be a dude. Mm-hmm. How the fuck about it? <laughs> <laughs> It's the way Zo starts out when he speaks to young middle schoolers. Yes. How the fuck about it, fifth graders? Right, and then the like, you ain't never come again. Uh, you little right. shit turds in here. I'm going to whip your little fuckers into shit. No, God I'm damn it, I'm going to run through you like a plate of hot Indian food. Ooh. Hurry up. Caller, you're on the voice of reason. What's your name and where you calling from? Speak on it. Shallow. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey sister. sister. All right. Hey, now. Hey. What's happening? Hi. Oh, pretty voice. This is this is Nia from Atlanta. Hey. Hi, Nia from All Atlanta. Right. How you doing? Shit, old leathery voice. Oh, my God. Speak on it. Hi, Jeff. Hey, girl. You sound pretty and dark. Am I wrong? I am not dark. See, I'm I was wrong. No, you are pretty. I, I heard peanut butter all uh, the way. Did you? I yes, heard man. chocolate. Caramely nougat. Go ahead, girl. Hey, peanut butter. Caramely speak nougat. on it. Hi, so I don't want to forget the sister that's in the in the um, in the studio. I'm sorry. What's your name? Tiffany. Tiffany. Hi. Mm-hmm. Okay, jumping right into it. Um, this is this is one of those subjects that I think is is a bit touchy, only because the narrative for black men and black women when we're children is different. Right. Wow. Um, Beautiful. How we grow up and the things that we hear and the things that we're taught in terms of how we need to turn out when we become adults. Mm. Um, it It's just different. Um, of course, there's the, the general narrative that good girls don't do X, Y, and Z. Right. And boys can pretty much do whatever they want. Mm, um, indeed. You know, the good girl doesn't get taken home to mom. So all of these things are still ingrained. Um, especially for women of a certain generation. Mm. Um, it, it's just not something that you do if you want to be looked at as a respected or be respected as a woman. There are just certain things that you don't do. Um, and if you're a girl who grew up in the South like I did, it's even stickier. Right, <laughs> right, okay. right, 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 right. Um, and so that I think that narrative has to be addressed. The second thing is, um, when you're talking about the girl who's the CEO, um, what? who is she after she take, kicks her shoes off? Who is she right. when she's not at work? The question I think that comes to mind for me is, did she have an example before Of who her? to be. Of oh, who to right. be. Of That's to be. beautiful. Absolutely. Wow. Um, if you don't have that example... Um, you know, and you're and you're the pioneer <laughs> mm-hmm. of 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 that, and you know you're you're basically you're blind trying to figure it out. Now the girls coming up after you will have the example. If you have daughters um, who can look at you and say, "My mother was, you know, this this great woman. She ran companies. She did that, this, that, and the third, and she was able to maintain a healthy relationship." Mm-hmm. And I actually saw the example so that I can perpetuate that in my relationship when I get grown and I can teach my daughters and so it's generational but until that happens it's you're you have to figure it out wow let me just say how dope you are right wow you, you, listen the articulation the vibe Man, any man who is a man would love to have this woman. I she in Atlanta. Absolutely. They're probably hard to find. Right. Mm. But let me just say why I agree with you so much. I said the new Renaissance woman, because you are a Renaissance woman, right. mm-hmm. educated and making your own money. Right. That changed right. the relationship dynamic. I've said right. on many occasions... The sister who finds herself in this position is in the same position as the first year, first round draft pick going in, going from poverty to wealth overnight. Wow. Right. Right. They don't know money. That's why they lose money. They don't right. understand what it means to be wealthy. And I'm saying sisters who are in the position of I make my own decisions. I guide my own life. I pay my own bills. I'm my own boss. That that's like a lottery pick in the in the NFL NBA draft. It's we went from 
take your ass in there and make the goddamn hot water cornbread like I told you now. Okay? We, you went from there. <laughs> that to, now is to the who warning you part. To. <laughs> like, who you talking to, nigga? <laughs> right? Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> take my take my ass in my kitchen and make my cornbread with my pots and my pans. Right. That I bought and you saying that you're right. is what you want me to and do. And you saw the emergence of this type of woman. I, I, I love the way Robin Givens played her in Boomerang. Mm-hmm. Where she oh, fucked Eddie and then left the bread on the table for Eddie, like, thanks for the dick, nigga, mm-hmm. and I'm out. Right. She hoed his ass, mm-hmm. like, you're the hoe here. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, which was realistic. It's just his response wasn't. But my point nigga being. Nigga, scoop that money up and go to the mall, nigga. <laughs> well, the money would be, yes, we would all take the money. But <laughs> all I'm saying is, <laughs> she has to find a new set of rules. Right. Right. She has to recontextualize relationship goals. Right. Right. And the sister has got to stop gauging her relationship goals off of white people's standards and norms. Right. The sister is yeah. looking at the white woman going, well, she has a baby by 27. Well, she's married by 25. Right. Why can't I find that? First off, your definition of love has to be authored by the most powerful and creative woman in the history of humanity. You. You sitting right. here copying your albino step baby. Right. You, right. You, yeah, you counting a tribe that ain't nothing like <laughs> oh, your tribe. Exactly. You <laughs> counting a tribe right, that's baby. beneath your tribe. Right. Yeah. I got to say, you are awesome. Shit. What's your name again? Nia. Okay, Nia, we're dating now. Okay, <laughs> thanks for the call. Y'all go together? Okay. We go together. Well, she- Nia made a good <laughs> though. And you said, though, that she's talking about pioneering women. You know, the, the corporate woman, the woman who's doing her own thing, that has her own money. She is the pioneer. But you also said, I want the woman who just kicks her shoes off. What often happens, because I've been in that position, is you that woman, because you're pioneering and that's something you spend so much energy doing, that woman at work is the same woman at home. You don't really ever kick the shoes off. That's your mm-hmm. goddamn so problem. That's the problem. That's why you're dying you gotta sooner. Learn, yeah, you got to learn how to, like, what is the kick the shoe off version of me and how do I... How do I become vulnerable enough to share that with the dude over I'm here? I'm not fucking vulnerable. You know what, what the I'm fuck saying? you mean? No. This is a this exactly. is corporate America, that's nigga. That's what I'm saying. The like, vulnerable so get that's, eaten. That's right. the struggle she has. That's she has to be thinking. willing to be vulnerable enough to be like, oh, there is another version of me besides just this killer in the in the courtroom or in, in the corporate world or in well, you know, the well, boardroom or whatever. The, that's, the, that's the big mind fuck, okay? Mm-hmm. The, there's a job that's been done on us all. On us all. This is why, in my opinion... There is no such thing as a black feminist movement because I would like, I would, I say it, bitch, and ain't no such thing as, oh, is that your Siri? That was Siri. Yeah, uh, Siri. Uh, uh, talking about she ain't sure what I said. Siri cussed Jeff out. <laughs> I'm not sure what you said, nigger. I thought I heard that. Okay. You in your niggerous ways yes, will never she, prevail. Oh, uh, yes. Stop your porch monkey advice. Um, <laughs> what was, oh, <laughs> I don't think that, um, God damn it. I don't even know what I thought. I oh, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. You are comparing we... you are comparing yourself when you say you're a black feminist to the white woman and her problems right. with her man. Right. Please tell me at what point in society in the last 400 years that we have had goods, services, opportunities, mm-hmm. positions to keep from you. When you say as a woman, I only make 75 cents to every man's dollar. What you mean is I only make 75 cents to every fat, male, middle-aged, white man's dollar. Mm -hmm. So stop putting those gloves on to fight in another fight. I love it. Tiff, you have a point? Uh, well, I mean, that's a good point, uh, but that's a whole nother conversation, black feminists. But um, <laughs> what does black yeah. love go? What does black love relationship goals look like without white people rules? Really, it's just Oof. happiness. Oof. You know, like what does what do mm-hmm. I sh- what does really, you run like, you mm-hmm. run around with the white dress, mm-hmm. the long trail, niggas is throwing rice. Mm-hmm. Who, who's whose tradition is that? Mm-hmm. What does our shit look like Amen. when we love each other? Devoid of their framing. Right. And for me, I said, for me, the definition for you, of yeah. mine, <laughs> mine started becoming just happiness. Like, all of that aside, because I did, I had like the, yeah, traditional white looking one, and I really did. Because, um, well, I grew up white, so that's the picture that I had in my head. But 
after all that was aside, I was like, you really have to dissect it. Like, what does this look like? What does this look like? And for me, it was happiness. And you had to, I had to start really dissecting what is happiness. Like, I really just want a partner I can communicate with on a daily basis. Not agree with, because agreeing mm-hmm. with someone all the time is upsetting. Like, I need someone who and can actually, counterproductive. like, yes, like, I need someone who can actually have conversation and even disagree, have argument grow and just still sleep next to each other at the end of the night. Like, that's that's marriage to me. That's, I'm like, happiness. Someone who can, like, yeah. we can just cohabitate. Wow. <laughs> it's like, it's gotten that simple. Like, can we cohabitate yeah. and lift each other up and exist in a way that is productive and even uplifting? So, wow, you went from a description list that was so detailed that it could actually describe a motherfucker the FBI is looking for. Right. Down to, I just want somebody who can speak and don't shit in the bed. <laughs> Pretty much. Wow. All right, so let me ask you let me ask you both this. Yes, sir. Comparison mm-hmm. in relationship. Mm-hmm. Good or bad? Uh I think it's wonderful if it's constructive. I think when when you start comparing Give me an example of constructive comparison amongst mm-hmm. the couple. Amongst the couple. Uh let's compare where we were to where we are, to where we want to be. So that's from the inside looking out as a team. And Mm. of all of those three things, let's disagree. Let's find a place to disagree on why. Oh, yeah. Let's find a place to disagree on why. Because where we disagree is most important in this conversation. Let's iron that shit out. Okay, we can kind of agree that where we were ain't as cool as where we are, which ain't as cool as where we going. But what don't we agree about? Let's figure that out. Okay? Now, now watch me slap you in the mouth real quick. Pat! Oh. <laughs> Jeff just gave you the framework yes. for success. Absolutely. In the relationship. Absolutely. Okay. The comparison must be from y'all. To the outside world. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. When the comparison turns from you to them, like you guys are comparing what you are. Like, Mm -hmm. what are you? Or what I was with someone else. How do you stack up to me? That's where the conflict lies. Mm -hmm. Now, this shit is embedded. This is what I mean by the dominant society's framing of your relationship narrative. Mm -hmm. This shit is embedded in relationships. It's called CLs, Mm -hmm. comparison levels. Mm -hmm. Where did he go to school? What does he do? How do you, where are you in society? Mm. Now we know society. Now where are you with me? Right. Mm. You and I have already connected on a spiritual level. That's why we're here. Right. But we gonna let what society tells us, right? Mm -hmm. Make or break the yes. union. Yeah. Now watch this. Krishnamurti. It is no measure of health to be fully adjusted in a sick society. Right. Goodness. So we let the sickness of the society dictate. Dicta- Come on, man. That's why I had you do the comparison mm-hmm. level. Right. From the internal, the internal. right. Out. To outside, us against the uh, world, yes. and how we compare what we doing. Right. right now, is it important to have a job? Sure, of course. Is it important <laughs> to be educated? Yes. yes absolutely. But when that shit dominates all other faculties in the relationship, first off, if you've got real love, mm-hmm. and I seen it at your house. Oh, thank you, brother. Uh, nigga, hey. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> nigga, I seen it at your <laughs> house. Taste. You if you've got Ooh. real love, yeah. that that is the octane, the petrol that actually f- gives you the strength to fix all the other bullshit that may be a jar. Mm-hmm. I don't have a job. Well, if somebody, a woman, can see God in you without the job and still pour spiritually into you. Nigga, you're going to get propelled into some shit. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Oh, my God. I've always said this. Yes. If, <laughs> if a dude, ladies, if you meet a dude that ain't shit and you get with him. 
Let's and say six it. months later, mm-hmm. he don't want to be shit. And a year later, he still ain't shit. It's you. Amen. <laughs> it's you. A woman, the right woman will make a man want to be More. better. Better. He will, she will. And, and if you are not better, if you can be honest about your brokenness, do you know what the right woman can do? <laughs> She's the fucking compass and you're the hammer. She Damn. will come along and go, look. All it is, baby, is this piece goes here, and that piece goes here. Right. This piece. Now, let's try it this way. Get your dumb ass up <laughs> and try it that way. Right. And then turn around and look at it and go, now what? And see where the fuck you are. Baby, what's the next move? Right. <laughs> if you did your hammering and she did right. her compassing and y'all can talk about it, God damn it, you're going to get there. Yes, That's the absolutely. job of the woman. The absolutely. job of the woman is the compass. You are the fucking hammer. That's wow. it. And I'm not, and, I, and listen, this is a nigga, Johnny Mac. Johnny motherfucking Mac. Had a great joke. And I'm going to use a piece of it. Shout out. This framework that Jeff and I and Tiffany are laying out is loose as a yes. <laughs> this shit, yeah. he's as loose as a Halloween mask. This shit is dangling. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. All right. I was gonna go in another direction that had to do with Bangkok and whores. Uh, but okay. wow. no, but I'm saying it's loose. <laughs> It is. Nobody in here is saying that I don't believe that there is one way or a one right. perfect way. But what I'm saying is. When you have a corrupt society, I said it last night on the Corey Holcomb 5150 show. I I got to quote Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory said, listen, we voted. This is the lesser of two evils. If you voted for Hillary, you still voted for evil. So in our society, evil is okay. Let's just understand that. Yeah. Big business. CEOs, they mm-hmm. know at some point niggas got to die in right. order for us to stay 1%. Literally die. And it's okay. That's part of business. What are we putting in the cereal again? Oh, okay. That's fine. Niggas got to die. There's an acceptable amount of rat feces in your cereal. Right. Yes, oh, okay. It's, it's acceptable. Okay. Uh, 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 <laughs> there's a neurotoxin in your toothpaste, but that's, that's okay. We ha- So imagine that kind of thought it's effect on intimacy. It's effect on relationships. Right. It's effect on your evaluative process when you're trying to pick the right person. Right. And you think you out here doing good. Right. <laughs> Make you want to be vegan tomorrow. Nigga. <laughs> oh, God. This has been powerful. We have a few more minutes. Caller. You're on the line. What's your name and where you calling from? Speak on it! <laughs> hey, what's up, man? It's Hustle from Miami again. Hustle had to get back through. I, I see what's <laughs> up, Hustle. It's real shit going on in here today, right? Yeah, man. Hey, that uh, Southern Peanut Butter that just called in. That Southern Peanut Butter, boy. Call back, baby, boo. Get a little peanut butter <laughs> stuck in your teeth. Oh, God. I realize uh, I ain't really talk on the topic, though. And okay. And I, I'll just leave y'all with this quick question. Is it that black men and women have a problem, or is it that we have a problem with what we've become? You see? Mm. And mm. the good thing about seeing what we've become is realizing that we can become something different. Wow. I told mm-hmm. you he had jewels. I told mm-hmm. you. I'm going to leave it there, man. Man. <laughs> My man. Hustle yes. from Way Miami. Way to in with a dirty bomb. <laughs> right. Jesus. It's just real talk. Listen, I got to be honest, man. I want to love some real shit. I don't want to love a diet version of sickness. Mm-mm. I don't. And I don't need leukemia light. No. Oh, no. 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 And and I'm aware. I, I didn't ask for the awareness. I didn't ask for it. But the fact that I see... Now, and I, and listen, the glaucoma that was over my soul got ripped off through Mm. relationship failure. Mm. So now that I can see differently, do you understand? Like, 
I can't just go with the status quo of what sickness says is normal. Mm. I can't. Mm. And if you want to love for real, right? You got to first break up with the trauma, right? That is the ghost writer for your identity, oh, yeah. right? You've identified as the victim and now self-righteously deserving, right? Entitled, right? <laughs> for all the good shit in the world while you hold back the forgiveness that opens your heart to another level of vibration. Am I, am I speaking? I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Yes, I don't know do. if niggas understand yes, what's happening here. Caller, you're on the line. Welcome to the Voice of Reason. Speak on it. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, Zo. Oh, oh this is Miss Lips. What's happening? Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Miss Lips. Lips. I saw you on Twitter. I see you, girl. Here we go. This shit's about to go. Hey, Here we go. <laughs> hey, lady. What's going on? What's up? Jeff Brown gonna beat my ass, you guys. Never. Uh-oh, what you about to say? Never, <laughs> never. I just call you on your shit. <laughs> Chicago! I love it. Yeah, you know, but come you know on. what? I love it. Love correction. All right, mama. Well, there's 50 so. pounds of it here. As so. As so. But let me chime in into the show about submitting. Okay? I had a stand-up show out here in Phoenix, Stand Up Live. My cousin came all the way from Livine, Arizona, to come see me. Now, recently, I found out my cousin, we have something in common. My father molested me and her. <sighs> Wow. wow. And it brought, it brought in and she brought her fiance with her. And they both came. Each show I do out here in Phoenix, they come to me and they just tell me we're going to be out there in L.A. in two weeks. You understand me? But what it did at that show, it brought back pain. Mm. Wow. And she saw the pain, and we hugged each other, and we kissed each other, and we all got in, like, in a group hug, and they told me they was proud of me. See, no matter how we try to say we forgive, we forgive, we forgive, we still have to deal with the pain. And if you don't deal with the pain, pain, you can't forgive. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I know for a fact that I am wounded from a black man, but that's not the walk in the lane that I walk in. Because mm. I love my black men. I mm. love them. Mm. I support them. People Still. think I'm weird because my love is overwhelming. You understand me? Mm. But I forgive my father, and I know my father is listening into this show because mm. my whole family know. Wow. And I just want to say, Vincent Wilson, I love you. But there's pain, and he got to help me fix it, too, because there's a responsibility of accountability wow. for a black man. Wow. He must say he's sorry. Mm. I'm his little girl. So when you say, when you drop off your daughter, I look at that, and I say, damn, my father should have loved me like that. And a lot of women look at things like that. Mm. That's why they marry squares. Wow. They know that sweat nigga gonna come home every day. Mm, say more. Go deeper. This is this Thank is cathartic. You. Say more. The truest. No, it's just yeah. it's just the realest shit. Mm. I got an opportunity to marry two Africans right here, right now, and I won't because I can't settle. But what do you mean you cannot settle, settle for me? Offer. You are settling to marry me. What the fuck are you saying? They go, Jeff. Okay. Oh, yeah. I can't have you both on. I have 500 right, goods. Exactly. <laughs> you are oh, settling to marry me, hey, a Ms. man Lips. with 500 goods and 500 spears. What are you saying? Hey, Miss Lips, thank you so much, baby girl, Absolutely. for that truth. I must go check on my car. Yes. Thank no, you. Serious. Thank you, Miss Lips. No, I got you. I got you. Oh, yes. my God. Caller. Caller. You're the last caller of the day. You're on the line. What's your name and where you calling from? Wow. I was up, man. Raymond, one more time. <laughs> Raymond called from back Detroit. from Detroit. What's up, man? I wanted to uh, add something to uh, the thing um, as it relates to black men hating black women. I'm not one of them, but I think that black men hate black women because it's like a subconscious thing. If you can't beat them, why join? If you can't beat them, join them. Mm. As it relates to the white power structure, 
And wow. uh, mm. I want to mm. use that. I think it was a football player just recently came out and said something negative about black women. And right. you didn't hear no backlash from white power. You didn't hear no backlash from white women or white people. They just let it he ride. He, can mm-hmm. get away. he knew he can get away with saying that mm-hmm. because there are no consequences for putting down black people. Wow. Right. Wow. Amen. Appreciate the call. Thank you. And can I add one more thing? One more sure. thing All right. All right. Uh, it was a statement you made uh, pointing out Malcolm X where he said that the black woman is the most disrespected woman and, you know, the most unprotected. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, I want to throw another statement he made in there where he says that only a fool will let his enemy educate his children. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. again, we have been letting white power educate us and we're going through a, a serious identity crisis. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's where we are right now. We're going through a power struggle where we're trying to find our identity as a culture. Wow. And it's going to be a painful process. Hey, man, we appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Wow. We got another one. Let's just do it. <laughs> Caller, you're on the line. What's your name and where are you calling from? Make it quick. Hey, what's up? What's up? This is Matt Brother from D.C., man. Uh, so I was just listening. I, I'll make it real quick, man. I just want a lot of these women to understand that the black man is not the enemy. And uh, that's love what him. I've been dealing, dealing with for a minute. Seeing a lot of black women, you know, think that we are the ones that are really oppressing them and giving them issues, whatever. And a lot of times these women don't understand that they're winning. They lose so much, they don't even understand when they're winning. And then they'll put themselves in a simple situation where they'll sabotage a good situation in order to lose, in order to have something to complain about. All right. So that's it. I know it's at the end and everything, but appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. And l- let me just say, man, Miss Lips encapsulated mm-hmm. it perfectly. It's love hate mm-hmm. because Miss Lips and Prince. If I were your girlfriend, would you run to me right. if somebody hurt you, even if that somebody was me? Mm-hmm. We are men and women, brothers and sisters. We are the source of the hurt and love, the hate and love that we're experiencing from each other. And if we don't find a way, if we don't find a way to up level the love. That hurt is going to take, it's going to heal in geological time. Right. I also, I th- I feel for Miss Lips because I, I have a very similar story. Um, but for me, for forgiveness, forgiveness is not public and you can't seek someone else to help you get it. So the sooner we realize that forgiveness starts from within and you don't have to pronounce it to them. Like I've been raped and um, I've forgiven my rapist, but I will never tell him that because my forgiveness is for me to be whole not for him to know. Right. So the sooner we start to really or for him that, to change or, or him, him to, to change to or acknowledge or acknowledge nothing or confess nothing. or whatever. Right. Like he literally looking me in the face was like, I didn't rape you. Like, yeah, we've had that moment. So my healing came when I realized I forgave him and the, the three other occasions that I was sexually abused. And I realized the forgiveness was for me came mm. from within and not for me to announce to them or anybody else. Right. Um. So I, I my heart goes out to you, Miss Lips. I see you, girl. Um. And we'll talk about it. Man, this show was hot monkey grease. <laughs> oh, I love doing these kind of shows because we need the cathartic process to take place. If we're going to unify, if we're going to cooperate, collaborate, and just really love and support each other and build legacy. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Voice of Reason. We'll be back Friday with another barn burner, another heater, another slapper. Zoe Williams, The Voice of Reason. We out. Deuces.